The simple functional six minute walk test can predict exercise capacity and is widely employed to assess treatment outcomes. In the May 3rd issue of Jack, there is a research letter on the pre-procedural six minute walk test as a predictor of mortality in patients undergoing transcatheter mitral valve repair. To talk about this, I'm with uh, Scott Lim, who is an MD and director at the Advanced Cardiac Valve Center, uh, Department of Medicine at the University of Virginia. What was the thought process first? What was the inspiration that led you to go in this particular direction for these patients? So what we're looking at is patients with mitral regurgitation that are undergoing transcatheter mitral valve repair with a mitral clip. But so often, it isn't the fact that they have valve disease that makes them high risk. It's the, the body of the patient around the mitral valve. And so while we know we can do the mitral clip procedure, and the majority, or 80% of patients, symptomatically get better, there still is about 20% of patients that despite getting a good result on the mitral valve, still seem to not fare so well over the long term. And so what we're trying to do is look for some metric that could better and easier help us discern which patients are symptomatically going to get better, as well as just over the long term, quantitatively, do better as well. So what did you do specifically? So one of the things that we actually took out of the playbook from TAVR is every single patient gets a frailty metric. And one of the frailty tests is uh, simply a walk test, a six minute walk test. Right. And we did that on every single patient over a time period coming to our institution who are going to get transcatheter mitral valve repair with a mitral clip. I mean, frailty is really hard to assess. And it's the eyeball test sometimes works, sometimes it really doesn't. But in this particular case, what did you find? Yes. So what we did is, because I absolutely agree, the eyeball test is wonderful, but it's very hard to quantify. So yes. instead, what we did is we did six minute walk tests on everybody. And that we essentially found that we can place them into one of three groups. Patients that can do a six minute walk test and do well with it, which we define as greater than 233 meters in six minutes. Or patients that walked but couldn't make that cutoff and was less than 233 meters. Or the third group, a patient due to their comorbidities just couldn't walk at all. And what we found is that there's a significant difference in all three of those groups, with the patients who couldn't walk at all having absolutely the worst outcome long term. And then there was a stepwise improvement in mortality in the patients that could walk but not so far versus the group that could walk the longest, more than 233 meters. We found they did the best. Are there people who can't walk because they have advanced mitral valve disease? Is that influencing it? Usually not. The reasons that they uh, couldn't walk usually were separate from their valve disease. Yes, patients who are in heart failure from their mitral valve disease usually can walk but are huffing and puffing and maybe in that intermediate group that couldn't walk as far. But the patients who had multiple other, particularly non-cardiac comorbidities, that um, prevented them from walking at all, those are the patients, again, that did the worst. And those also are the patients that qualitatively your eyeball would have picked out. So would this be something that you would go ahead and recommend at this point, just to try and better understand the patient rather than just rely on the eyeball to actually try a six minute walk test? Yes, I would. In part that one of the things that we're all trying to do is get to the point of while we have technology that allows us to do much more for our patients, we're now at a phase of trying to understand who we should be offering this to. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. And this is one quantitative measure that is simple, reproducible, and easy to do. The mitral clip kind of stands alone at the moment. In the course of the next three to five years, do you think there's going to be competition? I mean, where are we going with the mitral valve in terms of repair, replacement? At present, one of the very exciting frontiers is just opening is transcatheter mitral valve replacement. However, at present, those delivery systems, for many of them, are large enough that they're not being done percutaneous. They're doing some sort of hybrid surgical approach. But if you're taking a high-risk group of patients anyway and subjecting them to a procedure that is in more invasive and has more potential for morbidity and mortality, yes, I think you really want to separate out these patients and get quantitative measures of frailty like a six-minute walk test. That is easy to do. Are you optimistic in the next few years that we're going to have some more valve options for these Absolutely. patients? Absolutely. I think it's been an exciting time to be in cardiology and particularly in cardiac valve disease. So I think that in the next few years we'll see not only a number of different therapeutic options, but an improvement in our ability to understand not only the valve, the valve disease, but also the patient with that valve disease. 
we're kind of spoiled with Taver because it just came about so quickly and it spread so rapidly that uh, it's going to take a little while longer, I think, maybe for the Mitro, but it's, I think the, wor the wait is going to be worth it. Where Taver is relatively binary in the disease process and the exactly. treatment and the outcomes, Mitro is much more a spectrum. And so I wholeheartedly agree with you that the complexity of our understanding of mitral valve disease, the outcomes, the therapies, is definitely a spectrum. Well, this research letter by Dr. Lim and colleagues is uh, in the Jack May 3rd issue, so please check that out. And for Cardiosource World News and Cardiosource World News Interventions, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.